there. Um, and obviously, it was an avalanche of threes. They, sh they made threes. We made adjustments. Didn't work. Nothing we uh, attempted worked. Uh, give Big Weston a, his, his due. I mean, he made some shots, and that makes your defense or their offense that much better and defense that much tougher. Um, and Washington has been playing like that all season. I mean, he's the emerging star that I don't think gets enough credit. That kid is shooting over 50% from three. So it presents a challenge. And C.J. Walker, um, you don't realize how good he is until you, you're in-game. Um, really a, a maestro uh, of getting people shots and doing some great things. On the other end, we have to do a better job. Lamar needs to do a better job by controlling his emotions. Um, look, he's a senior, really wants to win. He can't fall. But we need him in the game. It's a single-digit lead for them, and we're right there, ready to get a stop and get the ball back. And next thing you know, it's a foul and a technical, and, and now we're, we're short-handed. So he's got to learn from that. He's got to learn from that. We call road attitude. We've got to have a great road attitude, and we got to move on. So I talked to him about that. We need him in the game. We need him in the game. But this game is over now, right? It's in the rearview mirror. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're 24th in Kempom. So that game's not going to hurt us or help us. What's going to help us is the fact, the way we lost. That's going to help me in practice. That's going to help me for motivation. From the TV angle, you looked maybe atypically restrained. Um, what went into that? And then for Lamar's technical and, and maybe just the cascade of fouls, um, you know, did you think they were justified? How did, how did you kind of come out of all that? And what were you trying to do in terms of your influence and in staying as composed as you did? You know, I've been down that path. Lamar knows I support him. The players know I support him. Um, I just felt like if I, he's losing it, if I lose it, Mike's going to lose it, and then who's next? And we don't need that type of storm right now, not on the road when you're, you're still in the game. I thought that would only <laughs> compound the problem. When I talk to my team all all the time about compounding the problem. One mistake leads to another mistake. Well, I didn't want that for our team. Um, I did look at the fouls. Uh, look, they shot the ball well. I don't want to diminish what Ohio State did. They played really well and they shot the ball well. Um, I did look at the fouls. I mean, I talked to the Big Ten about some of the foul calls and specifically on Lamar. And, you know, what's done is done. But hopefully the, the officiating crew learns from it and will learn from it because right now we are. We're found at a very high level. Um, especially in these last four games. So we have some things that we need to work on. Unfortunately, the games are like, we have no practice time. We have one prep game, one prep game, one prep game. Uh, so it's been challenging for us to get some good practice time in where we can really fine tune our habits. Um, but we'll try to do it today and, and, and hope to get ready for Maryland. I think it was Brett Brown that said that you spend more time resting than you do practicing. And the NBA is different than college, but you kind of alluded to that. How do you approach making changes with such a quick turnaround? Yeah, I mean, and how much do you just flush a game like that and say, look, there's certain maybe emotional things we can learn this, but maybe some preparation things, but there's so much about that game that kind of makes it hard to box in as a normal performance on either end. Yeah, if we had the more for 40 minutes and we still lost by 30, uh-oh. All right, well, we didn't. We only played 17 minutes. I'm, I'm flushing that right down the toilet. I'm flushing that and we're gonna move on. We're, we're gonna look at our turnovers. We're gonna look at certain things, maybe our middle ball string defense, we're gonna look at a little bit. Uh, but I think it's best to flush it and move on. Uh, look, we know what our goal is at the end of this season. That, that, that game is one game with 20 more games to go here. So we got a long way to go. So it's in the rear view mirror. We got to move on. We got to get better today. You're right. Rest is probably more important. The mental conditioning of this is extremely important. Having some individual meetings, team meeting today, got to do those things to reset, recalibrate, and then let's go back. Let's go out and, and try to get better in 75, 80 minutes. And obviously, you know, you're trying to win every game, but your first two Big Ten games are against top five teams. You're going to play teams that aren't as good as these guys. How do you kind of get them to go into tomorrow night with a, a confidence, but also without making them put all their eggs into one? And now we are, in a hypothetical sense, 0-2, and or we're 1-1, and just kind of saying, you know, it is a marathon at this point, not a tomorrow is the season. Kind yeah, of that's why I never put so much um, emphasis on one game versus another. We, we got to go out and compete and play Penn State basketball, whether it's 
Maryland or Yale. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. We're trying to form those habits. We're trying to get as connected as possible. We're trying to continue the process of getting better. That's the goal. I don't think we have unattainable goals either. I think our goals are very solid where there's so many games left that if we just get 1% better each day, those goals will happen organically. They're, they're gonna happen because we got a good group of kids that come in every day and get better. Whether we win tomorrow or not, we gotta get up the next day and get, you know, one, work on ourselves and then eventually get ready for Alabama, which is another big challenge for us. Uh, Mike, probably the first time all season I can remember where he didn't, I don't know if it was not necessarily look engaged, but just wasn't having the impact that we've become accustomed to seeing Mike have this season. Did you speak with him after the game? And, and go I, I spoke with him during the game, you know, uh, before the game, media, media timeout, halftime, just trying to get him going, you know, and, and Look, it's day to day. It's day to day. But I think he's been really consistent this season for the most part. So, you know, he stubbed his toe a little bit on Saturday. I have a strong feeling he's going to come out and practice real hard and play great tomorrow night. It was that was part of that just going up against a really good front line in Ohio State? Because, you know. I think we've been up against some good front lines already. You know, I don't know if that's the case. You know, we're on the road. You never know. Um, but the mental conditioning uh, of all of this is so important. Where our mindset is and approach is, is critical to our success. So Mike needs to dial in um, from, from walk through on. How has uh, Brockington been a spark for you guys off the bench? Yeah, you know, and he was a little rusty early, uh, a little rusty in New York, but man, he has come really back strongly, uh, especially in Wake Forest. I thought he was terrific there and he was dynamite on Saturday. He was fearless out there. Uh, I think Ohio State is one of the faster teams in the in the country, not just our league. I think we're really fast too. So you can imagine, you know, how fast that game can be. But I thought he looked really comfortable out there in that setting. So he's that six man that we, you know, desperately need to bring us a little some fire and energy off the bench because he's defending well and and he's getting to his spots where he's scoring the basketball. And he was two for four from three. So he's getting a little bit more confidence behind that line. Back to Mike, there was a moment in the second half, probably three or four possessions in a row, it seemed like. I think he had a rebound and a blocker. There was, yeah, he it emerged. Was, it was like yeah. he activated all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. How do you talk a guy? I mean, can you talk a guy into a moment like that? Do you just ha Does it have to happen on its own? How do you... How do you get that it's out gotta, of Mike? It's just got to happen. <laughs> you know, we've been with Mike for five years. We kind of know, you know, when to push, when to, when to hold back, and, and when it's not going to work at all. So that's why I always say to you guys, he's playing great. He's playing cons most consistent season he's ever had, but it's day-to-day. -day. And how much do you think MJ learned from the experience of he had played minutes last year, but maybe not that many, maybe not against a team like that. And then he goes, you know, welcome to the Big Ten. How much of that is what he experienced? Ben, it's a, it's a really strong point. And uh, MJ and I talked immediately following the game, and I, I just said, what did you learn? And, he, you know, it's, it's different. He only played eight and a half, nine minutes last year in the Big Ten. I mean, that was really his first Big Ten road challenge. And, uh, you know, I think he's going to learn from it. I think he's going to grow from it. I think he's going to get better from it. And then he's going to understand if they're playing that aggressive versus him defensively on how to attack it. I thought he was on his heels a little bit for most of the game until the second half where I thought the speed slowed down for him, uh, where it was still, you know, 9, 11 in that range. Uh, so he'll learn from that. He'll get better. He's a terrific kid. Maybe in the same vein, was there some value for Seth? Um, in that experience. Sorry. Yeah, anytime I can get Seth Lunny critical minutes like that, it's only going to improve our team. Now, L Lamar has been getting in foul trouble. Uh, Lam Lamar's got to work on that, being in stances, having the best habits possible. Okay, so Lamar's over here. But to be able to give Seth those minutes, look, I don't want to ever lose like that, uh, but to give Seth those reps, uh, it's important for us and how good we can be going into January and February and March when you really need them during those dog days. How do you balance the intensity that you want on defense from these guys with what you're saying, which is Lamar doesn't have to contest every layup or every sort of thing like that. How do you get them to go between the lines? So I want to be clear what I said. He's got to be in stances. He's got to, he can wall up 
we don't need the steel. We just need a chest and a wall up and show a show of hands. And I think that's what Ohio State did a nice job of, where, you know, we're, we're a great team. We steal the ball. There's no doubt. Jamari's great at that. And Josh Reeves is always good at that. We have guys on this team that steal the ball. I would rather take three or four less steals and play solid defense for 22 seconds and not put them on the free throw line. Free throw line is hurting us. They shot 19 free throws in the first half. If you cut that in half, what do we got? A two-point game? Uh, I don't Yeah, maybe. Right? So we, we, we got to work on some things. And, and again, playing in the Big Ten is totally different than playing in New York and playing on the road somewhere else. It's totally different. Officials, game, fan experience, everything. It's the Big Ten. It's the best league for a reason. Hey, Coach. Uh, this point in the season, have you noticed Lamar taking anything in, kind of finding joy in his last go around here? Yeah, he has to. It's a good perspective. He has to. And him and I met yesterday, and, and I told him, we gotta, you got to have fun. Uh, I think you asked me that a week ago or so, Ben. You're like, are you having any fun? You find enjoying this. I don't like losing by 30, but I'm enjoying this team. I think we have a very good basketball team, despite what happened Saturday. And if anybody watched the game, they would understand what went on. And if you didn't watch the game and just saw the score, well, you're probably in a different space. <laughs> a space I don't want to even visit. But he's got to enjoy it. He wants to win so bad. And we all want it for him, but we, as my friend Nate would say, we can't choke the golf club either. We just got to have loose hands and free swing. So you guys are obviously hosting a, a good team in here. Uh, got a big win over Wake Forest last home game. I know I asked you about you kind of campus buzz, I think, last time you were here. Um, are you expecting any kind of elevated level of fan experience? I, I, I'm, you know, it's the last thing I wrote on my notes here. Like, come, please tweet this. Or, I'm not on Twitter anymore, but send this out for me. Come on. Everywhere we go, look on my board that I write on. The students are so close. They, a, they put a big chunk of gum on my board. That's how close they are. I mean, that's how crazy these fans were uh, on Saturday. I, I can't make that up. That's the first time in my career I've ever seen anything like that. And by the way, you know, today I can laugh at it. That's a good move. Pretty funny. Nice job. But we need, we need, a, we need a home court advantage Tuesday. Come on, 7 o'clock, there's not much going on. Is there anything going on? Come on out. I'm sure PJ's got free food, free everything, T-shirts, TV guy's going to be here. Come on, Lamar Stevens has only got 14 home games left. Mike Watkins only got 14 home games left. If you don't come and see Lamar Stevens and Mike Watkins before they leave and graduate, well, you're not doing, you're not doing yourself any favors. Two of the best players in Penn State history. Easily, in Penn State history. So please come out. Nate? I, I kind of hate to ask this question, but I'm going to anyway. Um, there's, there's. It's not going to be about the refs, is it? It is. Uh, well, specifically, it's going to be about Lamar and building the benefit of the doubt as your career progresses. It. Ha do you believe in that? I guess f for a job that is a, as subjective as it is, um, like is that is that a thing? It, uh, being able to, as your career progresses, earning respect, earning the benefit of the doubt, and calls being different for different players. Um, first you know it's our first big 10 game so uh, i would have to gauge it over the next you know big, all the big 10 games look he's been to the free throw line 47 times that's the next closest guy is 28 so i would just based on that statistic alone i might say so far he has in that game maybe not maybe not but he He's got to. He's got to continue to earn it, and he's got to continue to have a road attitude. It's definitely gotten better since his freshman year till till now. Let's just put it that way. Um, but you know, he can't complain every call. I can't complain every call. I can't officiate. I'm a bad official. I'm a much better coach. So I'm going to coach the game and let, let those guys officiate. Has has his the way that he deals with situations like that? Has that evolved at all through his the course of his career? Yeah, I think he's gotten better. I think he's gotten better. But it's a work in progress. Again, it goes back to how badly he wants this, how badly he wants to win and, and lead and do something special here that we haven't seen. So when you want something that bad, that love that you have for this program and this university, you're, you're going to boil over every now and then. I, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Coach Chambers? See you tomorrow night, guys. All right, thank Thanks, you. Everybody.